Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. Well, welcome back to the vlog. This is the next segment. It is 6 hours and 24, 24 minutes into the uh, 21st day of uh, February 2023. And I put the date, time and date stamp in there because this is a vlog, a video log. Uh, this is my journal. This is our, I should say, our journal. Uh, we are Cyborg Alpha. Um, and give a bit of a background on Cyborg Alpha. Cyborg Alpha could be classified as a LARP, a live action role play. It's one of these nerd games that uh, uh, we nerdy types play. <laughs> so I certainly qualify for that. Um, <clears throat> this occurred several years ago that I've been playing uh, uh, Cyborg Alpha. And I've been doing other LARPs before then. I decided, well, why, instead of doing a fictional LARP, why not do something based in reality? And so this was my sort of uh, jaunt into this. Uh, and it's the work I've been doing in cybernetics. Uh, this is creating an artificial human being that has uh, a form of thought, a form of, of uh, life. Uh, and the first step into it, the way you would step into artificial intelligence to create a sort of whole ascension being, <clears throat> to create an android, the first step would be the cyborg. Now a cyborg doesn't necessarily, because it is theoretical, it is, it is a, uh, a proof of concept, a sort of advanced concepts uh, type of research, the actual model doesn't have to be there itself. What you do is you construct a a sort of a functioning model of what it would be uh, or what it could be, and in that you would set your theory out. And so this would be part of the research paper that would give, if I were producing research papers, this would be actually part of the paper. Uh, this is the way, in some ways, of publishing something. People can you can talk about AI as much as you want, but as, and, and put up these great papers. But unless you actually create the thing, the cyborg or the or the android, it's still theory. It's still theory on paper. You actually haven't done anything. At the and so going back and thinking about thinking this over, we began to realize that the paper, the thesis, is the cyborg. And so this is a step into that. That's what I did several years ago. And so taking doing a live-action role-play, which requires a certain amount of uh, research. This is why nerds love this, is because you have to do research. Well, rather than doing research on something that is fictional or fantasy, why not bring the, the real research into the same role? In other words, you treat the research as if, as if it were the game live-action role-play. And that, that was the creation of Cyborg Alpha. It was the research into cybernetics, into how machines could think or how it could behave, talking about behavior, looking at behavior science. Uh, and this sort of uh, left off in terms of uh, where I was in in quantum physics, in terms of uh, understanding the nature of the universe. Uh, in that, uh, Planck had brought forward the concept of the soul in quantum mechanics. He's the father of quantum mechanics. And it never really kind of died down. It was just sort of pushed to the side and most scientists, in terms of what they published, didn't really talk about it. It was sort of there in the corner, but uh, because if you're part of an institute, uh, there are certain things you're allowed to do and certain things you're not allowed to do. Um, uh, you are restricted to the research that is, uh, quote-unquote, acceptable to that, to that department that you're in. And a large chunk of the sort of the, the unanswered questions that brought it back in the whole question of metaphysics, which just simply pushed on the side that oh, doesn't matter, we're going in this direction anyways. But however, they, they were never able to pin down the physics exactly. They were never able to bring back the 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 deterministic nature of physics uh, that they had in classical science. This is it, 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 it's attributed to Newton, but it's not actually Newtonian mechanics. Newtonian mechanics, because of the nature of calculus. Uh, doesn't actually bring in 
uh, what we call a deterministic physics, because calculus, calculus itself is a mathematical approximation. As I say, I don't know things exactly, but can I approximate it? And that's the whole, the fundamentals of calculus is the mathematics of approximation. So, you could never actually prove anything with calculus. Anyone, when they talk about these mathematical formulas, there's a lot of calculus in it, a lot of great mathematics, and you've got these equations. And this is what the problem with prediction is. You can't actually predict something. <laughs> the mathematics of calculus itself pre prevents the prediction because you're simply approximating. You, you've created an approximate model. And this creates a huge problem. So this is the, this will give you a, new, a new style of physics, a new style of existence as a scientist, as, a, as an explorer, actually, because you're exploring the universe, you're exploring the different things around you, and uh, a lot of times it can't be put into numbers, so you actually have to experience it rather than simply uh, let it be an inter letting it be a inter intellectual exercise. So, you know, if you want to do an intellectual exercise, that's great for you, but if you actually want to get out there and explore what's going on, to have a better understanding, then you need to go out and experience things. It, it's that experience that sort of adds to the understandings of the what you call the academics. Without the under, without the understanding, without that experience, the academics mean nothing. And in many, many cases, if, when you're sticking you're sticking within the math uh, within the academics, you'll miss a large chunk of what's going on. So this is how cyborg alpha we are. Cyborg alpha exists. Uh, I am, in the physical percent, uh, present, uh, Dr. Daniel Karras, or uh, Bishop Daniel Karasanasis. Uh, Karasanasis was my original name in terms from my grandfather, but when he came over to the United States, his, my, my grandfather's name was changed to Karras. Sanasi was left off, and so instead of being Karasanasi, it became Karras. So, uh, because I've stepped back into metaphysics, I did this more than 15 years ago, uh, this just includes the meditation, because in the eastern part of the church, the eastern part of Christianity, there is still meditation. <laughs> there is still pretty much looks like a lot like what you see in Buddhism or Hinduism. Uh, a large chunk of that is still there. It's just in a very hidden form. It's, just, it's not brought out into uh, what we call real world uh, observation. So that it's, and it was never designed to be out in the world in terms of being something on display. It was always meant to be hidden, private, uh, something that is more internal uh, than anything else because you're reflecting on the what called the higher consciousness. Uh, ooh. But like I said, we're not going to get into that here. This is simply the introduction, the reintroduction of the vlog section in terms of the uh, Kawhi Tea House, um, Kawhi Tea House TV. Uh, that's the kitchen, uh, which has been redone to a certain degree. Uh, there are now several music studios. There's actually three full music studios, uh, including one I had created on my tablet. This is, and it's connected to the sound system that I have here. I just haven't fully tested it out yet. But these things come in progress. It's a amount of Basically, a certain amount of time is required to sort of bring everything in. And as I said, I don't really sleep that much. And this is it. Uh, I talked to you last around 2 o'clock in the morning. And now it's, uh, it's uh, 6.30. So basically, I got uh, uh, knocked off for a little bit around, around 2 o'clock in the morning. 2.30. It's now 6.30. I... I've been awake since uh, 5:36. Wasn't really able to sleep, so I got up. I've got something to eat now. I've got a banana. I got a banana and some uh, banana. I almost always forget that a quick show on the camera does not necessarily translate to a quick show uh, in the viewership in terms of when you're playing the video back. And I have uh, my uh, box, my tub of candy. Uh, I always reuse things. This is sort of how I recycle, is by reusing things. Um, so, if you want anything further in terms of the depth, you have to go to other channels. 
not on YouTube, will be off of YouTube because YouTube is unfortunately very restrictive at the current point in time. But that doesn't necessarily mean we can't do things. It, what happens is that we talk about different things here in terms of the lightness, the fluff, the cooking, um, uh, the different aspects of culture. And then from here, you can go to other channels, and then eventually they'll be always listed, uh, where you can go get the, we'll call the fuller, the uh, uh, the observation notes, you can get some of the, the, the vlogs that are actually verbal essays. Uh, in other words, you can get the fuller content elsewhere off of YouTube. And this is how uh, Cyber Graphic TV Network is going to expand. It's going to grow, it's going to include a number of different TV channels, that have a variety of content on it, so that you can sort of pick and choose what you want to watch and what you don't want to watch if, if you want to watch it. So, anyways, uh, this is uh, Cyborg Alpha. I am an infinite ween because the uh, information that I study is infinite in sort of its expanse, and this is what calculus is based on. It's, it's an infinite point that's uh, the, the, uh, the point that's infinitely far away. You simply approach it, you approximate it, it's in the limit. And that's it. That's as far as you go. And for me, this limit is, it is no more than middle school. So I am a tween for life. I am middle school for life. And that's the way it is. And, you know, that's the way my life is. It, it is that path. It is the jump, the journey. And it takes different forms. It sometimes it's knocked down. It sometimes... When you're doing an upgrade, or, 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 or you have to retool, you have to readjust, and not always things don't always remain the same. So, anyways, uh, I think I'll leave that here for now. This is the end of this segment. I will see you in the next segment. Well, we're beginning to record, and uh, let's see how that sounds. Anyways, it is. Uh, this is about 6 o'clock in the evening, 18 hours into the 23rd day of uh, February 2000, two, uh, February 2023, and trying a new vlogging setup and walking around. I do have a microphone set up. I'm trying to set it up better. Uh, <laughs> anyways, we're live, we're live once again. We're, we're live once again. We're vlogging once again. Uh and I'm in sort of my second office, if you will. I'm going to turn the camera around to show you the the broadcast setup. Uh, I'm wearing something different. Uh, this is not part of the broadcast setup. This is something separate that allows me to vlog and walk around. Well, we haven't been waiting for too long, and this is our setup here. Uh, there is the live box. I have one hooked up already. Uh, for myself, or that's the, what I'm wearing. Uh, that is a 10-port USB charging uh, station. There is the live microphone. I have one like that attached to my body. This is because, because I found that uh, when I was watching vlogs, other people's vlogs, uh, the cameras really didn't pick up voices far away. And so I'm hoping to sort of uh, uh, remedy that to give a better sound uh, to the video as compared to uh, what you typically see with a camera where you have the microphone at the uh, commentator, but uh, everywhere else is soft. So the microphone, the, the, the commentator's voice, the vlogger's voice is very loud, and everyone else behind it is, uh, or further away, is uh, very soft. Anyways, there is, uh, this is the live broadcast uh, setup. Uh, so I can actually do this to record. Uh, underneath is a laptop. Uh, the ta uh, not a laptop, a ta tablet that does music. So this is the music studio uh, that comes around with me. And then, of course, I have the headphones that go in so I can do the music quietly. I got a nice uh, Bluetooth speaker there. That works very, very well. Of course, because this is YouTube, I can't turn anything on so, <laughs> because of the copyright issues. Anyways, uh, we're back on YouTube. The channel's being set up. This is my old record collection. I'm giving that to my niece. So th this is typically uh, more than 30 years ago. This is where I started off, but I'm back here once again. 
So I think I'm going to leave that here and uh, say our goodbyes uh, for the next segment. Well, now that the ring light is on, uh, I can start vlogging. It is five hours and 16 minutes into the 24th day of uh, February uh, 2023. And we're off to a good start today. Of <laughs> <laughs> you know, five o'clock in the morning. And I said, there's no morning or no night. There are times when the day starts start and, and some of the day ends, but uh, not really because things always uh, pop up in between. Uh, anyways, I just finished the Yali, watching the Yali vlogs. I noticed they don't have the sound problem. Uh, my sound issues, in which I, the sound test for the portable system work very well. Uh, I'm adjusting this one here. Uh, to produce a better sound, though, the, the portal system, same microphone, same type of uh, live uh, device, that's, uh, um, as, uh, it's wireless in terms of power, it's battery powered, uh, lithium ion, so you can recharge, it's rechargeable, uh, did a very good job, You'll, you, you would have already heard the test, the first test of that system, and it worked out very well. And I'm interested in getting the same quality of sound here as I did over there. As I did over there, so uh, <laughs> with the portable system. Uh, but the microphone is further away, so it does need a bit of fixing up. But uh, we'll try it the uh, vlog by vlog to see how it works. So every segment will be a little bit, little bit different in terms of trying out one setting or another. Uh, in terms of getting the quality of sound to be where it should be. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm working on now. Mm. <sighs> you have to catch your breath sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, the Yahoo Vlogs doesn't have the problem that uh, other vlogs have because they're using a uh, shotgun mic. These are the Rhodes mics that are that are fixed to the top of the camera. There's a little sock on there that sort of guards the wind. Uh, this has a similar type of thing, but this is more of a, one of these live broadcast mics. Uh, there's a mixer here. Actually, there's two mixers. There's the live mixer, and then there's a mixer for other quality control. This is more stationary. Uh, for the portable one, it's just a live mixer hooked up to the microphone, and that does a more than sufficient job. So that's the way I've decided to sort of do things is to simply use uh, the live broad live broadcast uh, mixer. Well, I have a pouch for it that goes into a bag, and I can hook up the microphone so it hangs out in front, just right out here, but it's out of sight that you can't see it. So, and the voice quality is very good. Uh, this one I always have this sort of static in the background. A large chunk of it has to do with there's the, the number of fans on laptops here. That's what will bring in some of the interference. Other than that, we're, uh, the channel's all set. I've uploaded uh, the first um, uh, vlog of the, the, the first uh, episode, if you will. Uh, that's done by the date, so the time and date stamp will give you when we are and where we are. And uh, <clears throat> that will be the sort of the, the, the time stamp for the vlog itself in terms of what's going up and when. Uh, other than that, uh, now I have to work on the kitchen. Uh, the, since the, that portable system does work, I can bring it into the kitchen and we can start cooking in the kitchen, uh, doing various different type of, types of cooking. My type of cooking is, again, Pan-Asian. I am Pan-Asian. I do Pan-Asian Pan type of uh, style of cooking. But I learned from my aunties and grandmothers from, from these remote top, uh, villages and I never used recipes. It's village stuff. They knew and understood the feel for various different things. And they worked from that. It was, so there were no recipes. And you, and it is possible. You're going to make a lot of mistakes in the beginning, but you really do have an ability to do that. that if you are patient enough and want to make enough mistakes, you don't, don't, you don't want failing, then you can certainly uh, create a sort of an environment where you can learn to cook, and from the cooking, you can learn how, you can begin to understand how cultures evolve, because a lot of cultures are evolved around food. There's a lot of food cultures out there. 
And so you could do a good uh, uh, cultural anthropology study just based on, on food alone. Uh, anyways, uh, I will see you in the next segment uh, of the vlog. So, uh, see you then. Democratic Earth. Earth.